Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the U Talk Show. We Welcome. promised you that there would be several topics of discussion over the coming shows. And this time, we'd like to address what politics actually is, but also to some extent what it isn't. I'd like you to, in your mind, conceive of a dino nuggy. It is a chicken nugget shaped like a dinosaur. And we know that <laughs> we know that yeah. chickens are one of the closest genetic descendants of the raptors, which at one point roamed the earth. We can argue that their descent into chickens and then nuggets means that what we are being fed, very literally fed, is a distorted and compressed representation of something that once was a fact. <laughs> Likewise, the same happens with politics. What we are fed, what we are given as information, is distorted, compressed, to a certain extent removed from reality into these tiny little bite-sized morsels that are palatable, easy to digest, and completely unrelated to anything happening in the real world. Kyle has a good line about this. <laughs> Kyle, Before tell our viewers can... what politics he is. Before I can do that, I just have to say, because he did not tell me he was going to describe it like that. I was not sure that was going to come around, but holy shit, did you nail it? <laughs> And I can't believe that I can't believe that you, I can't I couldn't believe I can't believe that you wouldn't nail it, but at the same time I can't believe that you did. I am amazed on so many levels. Come but, on, tell us what politics is, and I'm just right. pulling up my copy of The Life of Cato the Elder by Plutarch <laughs> to go into some really wonderful concepts like integrity and service and duty. Yes, yes. And I, I, look, I gotta, I gotta say, I feel like you're going like, go on, and say the line, Bart, because this is, <laughs> this is a line I use, this is something I say to people a lot, because a lot of people think politics is, you know, this battle between left and right and this competition of ideas. And well, I'm sorry to say that that's not politics, that's philosophy. Philosophy is the big brain 5D chess ideas. Politics. Sometimes. Well, Depends on, on who you're listening to with philosophy. But if you're listening to the right philosopher, of which I really wish I was one, but that's a whole other story, that's what it can be. But in regards to politics, I would say that politics is actually quite simple. It is simply the process by which the distribution of power, wealth, and resources is decided. Now, this can take a number of forms. In history, it's often taken the form of conflict, you know, because in the past, land equal power. So people fought over land because, well, that land was able to produce, you know, farmable goods. Some land might produce minerals like mines and that. Um, and in some countries, that still happens, you know, and in some areas of the world, some regions, it's still just conflict. But in a more... Uh, shall we say, modern society, like our own, like in Australia, um, it's taken more the form of, you know, a debate about how best to forward the nation and, you know, how essentially what policies to implement. So the distribution of power is, well, through voting. We elect the representatives and the distribution of wealth and resources is decided by those that we give power to to represent us, you know, your local and state representatives and same thing, but at the federal level as well. So that's politics in a nutshell. And I have found uh, regarding this, why I was looking at the life of Cato the Elder. Here it um, comes. Plutarch remarks that uh, Cato the Elder has alleged that wise men profit more from fools than fools from wise men. For the wise shun the mistakes of fools, but fools fail to imitate the successes of the wise. Interesting. I suppose that's definitionally foolishness, but if we can completely pervert what Cato the Elder wants to be saying here about the nature of virtue, we can see that people 
with entrenched positions of power benefit far more from controlling and shaping discourse, essentially getting the uninformed to parrot their arguments. Yes. Then us ordinary civilians get from the politicians. Yes. A politicians very, very effectively act of yeah, they effectively act as a force multiplier for gibberish. Mm. Yeah, and it's 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 kind of both interesting and also quite um depressing even that <laughs> that, that was the word I was politics going for, has gotten yeah, yeah that, that politics has gotten to, to such a state. You know that essentially it's it's all just a, a bunch of sound bites. Um, in fact, actually, the documentary um, that I, I talked about, uh, I think in the previous episode that I'm working on, um, literally starts out one of the one of the things that I I've scripted in it is uh, you know what do you uh, how do I, do you do you actually know what politics is or does everything you know about politics is that all just a series of sound bites given to you by a, um, by a, a uh, by a media machine? I, I've got to forgetting my own line now, <laughs> but um, but essentially that's that's what a lot of people's understanding of politics is now, um, in part because of because of how the how the media works. Essentially, um, you know, they're all just sort of pushing this uh, this this corporate agenda. Um, you know, essentially deliberately misinforming people for the benefit of the of the the individuals uh, who own them. Um, but at the same time, by the politicians themselves who who feed into that, you know, almost like this negative feedback loop. Um, <laughs> I was gonna, I was, I was, th- I was trying to think of something more, um, uh, I profound? guess, better to say, yeah, more profound. But all I could think of was a feedback loop of bullshittery. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah. But that's effectively what it is. And it's it's really sad because there's you know, we can accomplish great things as a society and government can accomplish quite a lot, but it's hamstrung. Um by among other things, you know, these this false presentation of politics by politicians themselves and the media. Okay, and so we're like eight minutes in and I've got the yes. skeleton in front of me. And I don't think we're going to have all this in a single episode at this point. Because just just for the benefit of our viewers, um, we have what is politics really about, which is what we're sort of getting on now. Um, How do we get to different political leanings and what leanings do larger factions in Australian politics have and how do they compare to the rest of the world? Mm. And how does the media impact politics in Australia? And this is all interconnected and complex Mm. Um, I think I can speed run that though. So we've we've kind of talked about how the how the media impacts politics, uh, mm-hmm. presenting sort of a essentially a perverted uh, view of it that that leaves people. The media is feeding you dino nuggets, doesn't... and they're not even providing good source. Uh, I bet you know what I bet they'll I bet they're using low grade barbecue and not even tartar sauce. Oofed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, all right. So, in the in the less than four minutes we have left, uh, so speed run, you know, how what are what are the different political leanings? Well, it's it's a little bit less leanings and more what you believe should be a driving force in politics. So, what are the driving forces? Well, there's uh, let's start with the one I hate the most: identitarianism. This is the belief in identity groups as a as a driving force in politics. Now, these can be racial groups, ethnic groups, and uh, it can be religion, um, you know, race, religion, gender, sexuality, that sort of thing. You know, the, I've referred the, the to this previously as tribalism, because yes. I think the word, even the term identity politics these days is laden with a bunch of strange meanings that have very little to do with the process of politics and mm-hmm. a lot to do with the process of creating a faulty argument. Yeah. But tribalism and, and is often... one of the earliest forces in politics, that there yes. are two groups, there are us and there are not us. Yeah. And anyone who can exploit that basic, basic instinct in us all gets a ready-made following. 
True. Now with the t just under two minutes we have left, I'll really quickly say, so that's, so that's essentially tribalism or identitarianism. Uh, then there's commercialism, essentially the belief in wealth as a driving force of politics, which I really want to get into in a full episode. And then there's humanism, the belief in people as a driving force uh, of politics, um, more as individuals and, you know, how to, how to benefit them um, mm -hmm. collectively, but on an individual basis. Uh, then there is legalism, the sort of belief that uh, the driving force of politics should be laws and legislation, and that we need to essentially take into its extreme, we need to legislate everything to death rather than just depend on people's um, judgment. And then lastly, there is... Um, Sorry, just pulling uh, up my legal culturalism. friend here. <laughs> well, all right, we have under a minute, though. So really quickly, the last one is uh, culturalism. And culturalism is the belief in culture as sort of a driving force of politics and society. Essentially, if you teach people good cultural lessons, that will produce a good society and therefore good politics. And there's a kind of variations on this, which is sort of authoritarianism and libertarianism. Um, essentially, how much control and authority over people's lives do you want government to have? Um, but those are more just variations on, on those five fundamental sort of uh, forces. Now, that's it. That's all we have time for, unfortunately. Uh, but in another episode, we'll discuss, um, we'll discuss even more uh, commercialism uh, and wealth in politics. Uh, but for now, thank you for your time. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. And hope you have a great day. And we we'll look forward to seeing you next time.